This is Penelope. She is what looks like a black face overgrown show sheep who has gone so long without shearing that she has become one solid mat. If you take a look in this little crevice right here, you can see that the depths of her match meet the length of my hand. When I peek in through this hole, I can tell that she's probably not a show sheep because of the texture of her fiber, but I'm still not sure what she is. I lay her down by bringing her nose to her hip, and when she contacts the plywood, her feet easily slide, bringing her rump to the board. As I take this rope off from around her mats, I can tell that she's really black underneath. This also does not match a show sheep, but I'm excited that there's very little wool on her belly. Matted bellies can be extremely dangerous to shear because of the blood supply that runs down the center of their bellies. So I'm just super excited that this comes off with ease. I'm also incredibly impressed because this girl just lays there and lets me take care of her. There's no tension, just complete relaxation. There's no way to prove it, but I really feel that these animals vibe with me. They can tell that I'm here to help. And even though she probably can't feel a difference yet, she already is relaxed. Getting into the first tip is extremely tricky. Those mats are hella thick, so I kind of just tiptoe around trying to loosen them up and leaving a little bitty ridges. When the weight of the mats pulls on the skin, it creates a tension wrinkle. The best way to avoid nicking those is to lift one part of my comb and leave all of these little ridges. That's fine, because I'll just go back and clean those up afterwards. This isn't always possible to clean them up, but Penelope is being extremely patient with me. I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty intimidating when I got to the neck. I tried to enter through the bottom like I normally would, but these mats are just too dense. I work my way up trying to look for a different entry point. I try by removing this mat from her cheek, thinking maybe that would give me a way in. It relieved a little bit of pressure, but in the end, there still wasn't a good way to enter from this side. I go back to the base of the neck to try again. The only way I can get through is if I can cut a hole through the mats. These shears are extremely sharp and are running at high RPMs. That just shows you how hard it is to cut through. I get a little groove going and then just use sheer force to get through it. Once I finally break it apart, I'm able to get down by the skin of the neck and start peeling all of this away. Penelope is a rescue sheep from the Houston SBCA. She was found downtown with a potbelly pig. Now her and her little potbelly buddy live their best lives out on this ranch. At the beginning, I definitely thought Penelope might be a suffix or your typical club lamb. But once I got down and saw underneath, I could tell that the texture and the color were not quite right. And while I was shearing her first hip by her rump, I noticed that she had a tail, and not a long undocked one like a show sheep would have, but rather a short one like a more primitive breed. So if I had to guess, I would say this girl is probably an Icelandic. Icelandic sheep should be shorn twice a year. If allowed to go a full 12 months, you'll typically see the ends of the fleece matting. I believe this girl could have gotten this bad in just three or four years. Once at her forever home, her owners did try to shear her themselves, but the task proved to be too difficult, and honestly, they were just worried about nicking her. This is a very valid concern, because unfortunately, I was not able to get all of this weight off without any nicks. She ended up with two small nicks, about the size of the end of my thumb, but both were very shallow and honestly superficial. They are just on the first layer of skin and hardly bleed at all. Think more of a skinned knee than a deep cut. The best thing for small nicks like that is to leave them alone and let them heal naturally. The wax that they produce, called lanolin, provides a plethora of benefits for the sheep. This includes keeping their wool a hygienic environment, it works as block from the sun, and has a little bit of waterproofing to it. But last and not least, it is a natural antiseptic. The best thing for small nicks like these is to leave them alone and let the lanolin do its job. If animals died from small nicks and cuts, there's no way that the human male children would ever survive. Some people want to spray it with different types of wound coats or ointment, but honestly, that does more to trap dirt in unless you're going to go in there and clean and make it a sterile environment, which most people don't do before spraying a wound coat like that. My main concern in the heat of summer right now, especially with how wet it's been in the southern states, is fly strike. We want to make sure the flies stay out of the nicks, and the best way to do that is to spray the animal with fly spray. Yes, it's that simple. Now we finally made it past the halfway point. I start to pull her up so I can work on the last side, but I want to free as much of the mats as possible before pulling her up. Once I do, the full weights of the mats will be pulling on her skin, and if I can do that for as short of a time as possible, that's best. So a quick little cleanup before I start really diving in there. Wow, did you see that? The mat just literally peeled off in two different sections. 
That's intense. As we get her up, it's almost like a piece of cardboard bending. I cannot even imagine how restrictive this entire mat was. It's so stiff, it's holding itself up. Now I grab the end of it to maneuver it a little bit so I can take some of that tension off of the skin. And I keep just chiseling away at it. We are so close to the end of this and Penelope has been a complete doll. I cannot get over the amount of patience she's had for me and has legitimately been a limp noodle this entire time. I two times sped this process up because the whole thing was 12 minutes and I could not talk that long. But can you imagine having to sit there for 12 minutes while somebody pulled on your hair trying to remove it from your very sensitive skin? She's a champion in my book and definitely a sheer that I will never forget. It's not just the incredible mat that I'm removing, but 100% the vibe of the sheep. One thing that I would like to point out as we're finishing up is just how good of a condition her body is in. Matted sheep like this are not typically happy and healthy. Usually I would take this off to find skin and bones. So this is as good as the story can get. Now just a few more swipes to free that last bit of mat and then a couple of cleanup before I stand her up. I can't even imagine what it would feel like to have the breeze on your skin after years of not feeling anything. Now I think I've got her cleaned up pretty good or at least good enough to be in a pasture. And here's our final result. It's a sheep and a sweetheart at that. And in the back you can see her pig buddy. Now I let her roll onto her feet, but she's not very interested in standing up straight away. A couple pats, a little bit of motivation, and still not having it. So I'm just gonna let her lay there and chill out. She can take her time, I have nowhere to be. But if she is just gonna lay here, I'm gonna take full advantage and get a couple pets in. Doesn't last long before she's ready to get up and take on the day. But now that I look back, it's almost like she lays there and lets me finish petting her. But let's go back and check out this felted mat. This thing weighs at least as much as a feed sack and is one entire piece. There's only one spot right there where you can see her neck broke apart for some movement. I cannot imagine dragging this around with me every day. Now let's get a close-up look at this monster. The outside is hard and felted, kind of like carpet, but the inside is nice and soft, kind of like a felted blanket. And certainly just as hot. You can see all the strands of the fiber there and the different stages of matting. The part that went over the majority of her body has rings in it like a tree. You can kind of see the ears. All I know is she has to feel better now. And she was certainly enjoying the breeze under the trees.